This is Tim. And Malele. And this is Critiquing Comics. Welcome to Critiquing Comics. This is Tim with Mulele in Tokyo. Uh, we've got a comic that was sent to us electronically from Scott Bufus, a writer, and Matthew Salazar, an artist. Uh, the comic is Esoteric Dialogue, Issue 1, uh, published by TwoToneComics.com, comics with an X. And, okay, I... This one. So, I like the art for the most part um it reminds me of charles burns a little bit sorry sorry before we get into the comic i want to ask a little bit uh mm. comics with an x uh, mm. are you familiar with well with- i know like it had a lot of significance in underground comics like a few decades ago yeah um yeah i kind of wondered about that too i mean it, it just changing the cs to x might have a little more meaning to it than they realize? Well, I mean, originally it was 1960s, and it um, was supposed to be a mark of underground comics to to show that they were different from the regular mainstream comics. Mm. Um, there, there was an actual point to having comics with an X. I don't know if this person knows that, but um, given the content of the comic, I would say he probably does. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly not something you'd see from Marvel or DC. It's far from that. So, yeah, possibly. Mm. Um, actually, it was, uh, I think, implied to uh, subvert mainstream comics mm-hmm. rather than just uh, disassociate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so Matthew Salazar's art... Um, kind of looks like Charles Burns work to me maybe not quite as accomplished and not quite the heavy blacks that Burns uses you know like in Black Hole mm-hmm. um but uh I thought the art was pretty good um the story I don't know I I have a personal bias against stories about conspiracy theories cuz oh. I'm I'm not interested <laughs> Wait a minute now <laughs> Are are you saying that these theories uh have no possibility possibility of of being real um well i guess i mean i i generally dismiss them and it seems like the stories about conspiracies either it's like okay are you going to make fun of it or are you going to buy into it and i didn't really see either one of those things in this maybe they made fun of it but that's arguable. Um, it was hard to tell how they felt about uh, conspiracy theories, about, uh, I don't know what all is in here, um, the Illuminati and all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. um, alchemy and ending of the gold standard. and um, So, I don't know. I mean, it just, that topic is kind of a turnoff for me. Mm-hmm. Um, what we get here, I mean, there's an intro talking about these kind of conspiracy theories. And then the story is about five teenage boys in a park at night playing a board game that relates to, you know, the Illuminati and all this kind of stuff. Um, And I guess I wasn't really sure what to make of it um, or what the story was trying to say. Did you get anything more out of it than I did? Um, well, I um, I like conspiracy theories, and I, I, I um, actually feel that they were having a lot of fun with this, that, that they were pointing at them. Some of them were obvious, um, some of them maybe a little less obvious, um, but basically um, five kids in a forest playing a board game, which, by the way, I really think that they should do a Kickstarter on to actually make a board game of this, because it's, it's well... If they want to kind of spread the word of their ideas on on conspiracy theories, uh, or just make a subversive satirical game, uh, I think that this one is a good one. And They've it, done a lot of thought on it. Yeah, there's some t- several pages in the back explaining yeah, it. The New yeah. World Conquest, the board game. 
it's it's definitely well developed in the comic. It would need a little further development to make an actual actual uh, game. They'd have to make many more cards. But um, I was actually quite intrigued by it. And I, I, I um, when I get a lot of text and I get a lot of of like explanation at the end of a book, I tend to just skip over it. But this one, I was intrigued enough to actually read through everything and found that it was actually interesting to read. Sorry, most comics um, at the end, when they have these explanations, they're bullshit. But this one wasn't bullshit. It was kind of uh, adding a little bit of, 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 of extra to the book itself, I, I felt. See. Yeah, for, uh, for me, because of my attitude about it, I was TLDR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but see, I'm, I'm I'm that way with with most comics. I I know people are going to say this is a sacrilege, but I was that way with Watchmen. Um, <laughs> that shit at the back is all text. Like, wait a minute, uh-huh. I know words. Oh. But um, <laughs> this this time, uh, I I felt it was worth reading and read it, and I enjoyed it. Um, the artwork I do like. It, yeah, it has some of the Charles Burns, but it, it's also got some uh, crumb. Uh, mm-hmm. and some other influences from underground comics. Uh, some of the artists that I've seen over the years uh, coming out of Last Gasp or, or that area, underground comics, um, but uh, cannot remember the names of for the life of me. <laughs> um, I liked a lot of the, the shading, the, the lighting effects that he uses, in, in, including in the first page, uh, the first panel where the guy's speaking, uh, he has a flashlight shown, showing uh, up his, lighting up his face. I found it particularly interesting because he's on radio. Mm. Um, I'm wondering who, who is that effect for? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it was um, kind of well, well illustrated, I thought. Mm-hmm. Um, I, um, I think that they they are they are having fun with this. They are looking at some people who take it very seriously, and the guy at the end of the uh, uh, the guy who kind of like stops the game mm-hmm. uh, as taking it a little less seriously, um, or maybe a reason for why someone would want to blow up the world. Um, I found it all quite interesting, and um, I enjoyed the history lesson about currency Hmm. um and basically felt that they did a pretty good job of taking a lot of deep information and chopping it down to a page a page and a half of of a history lesson Mm -hmm. and i love the the role-playing cards uh the full panel role-playing cards that they they Mm -hmm. are the uh full page yeah yeah, full page. Uh, what is it? Not role playing card. Um, uh, turn cards, uh, where they have to roll a dice, and depending on what they get, uh, the outcome is different. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, scenario card. Scenario card. Yeah, those were quite fun to read. Um, I, I actually quite liked it. And also, when I was a kid, I played Dungeons and Dragons, so a lot of this stuff is is familiar to me. Um, I also played Risk. Um, and some other board games, which this kind of, for me, harkens back to. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm, I'm all about this, this comic, and I quite enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked the point where, so when, we, when it starts, we see them kind of gathering in this place in the forest or park or whatever it is. Um, and they're wearing these costumes. And then when the game begins, the art changes and... Now they have actually become those characters that they're dressed as. I, I like that touch. Or now, now thing that's actually happening, and now I'm actually this character. Yeah, yeah. Well, in the in the in the end of the book, it it states in the rules of the game that you should make your own character with its own backstory, and then role play that character. It's not necessary, but it's recommended. And um, I think that these kids do exactly that and it's actually quite fun Mm -hmm. i also like that the the art styles vary depending on what's going on the Mm. the kids in the forest versus the the um uh the 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 thing that 
happens in the scenario world. So, for mm -hmm. example, when he pulls up the card uh, about media exposure, then they go to some fake Fox and Friends uh, situation called Cover Up in Cold Blood. Yeah, I, th I almost thought it was a different story. Like, oh, did that story end? We're in a different story? <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's the reality within the reality. So yeah. um, it, it's, it's actually quite clever and well-drawn. And, and the, the artist has, has a lot of versatility for um, being able to do something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I dug the art because he uh, focused himself very, very well in the comic. Uh, I dug the writing because the writer also focused himself. Um, he had um, a um, an idea that I've seen other people use or talk about, but when they use them or talk about them, they tend to go off the rails. Um, more often than not, it turns into a rabbit hole that people just jumped down and this person kept it tight, kept it together, made his points and moved on. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he was kind of poking fun at a lot of this stuff too. Um, that's why it's a board game, not, not a serious look at something. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, this, in, in, just for me, I, I dug it. I thought it was, was well done. Mm. I think it was well done. It just it it wasn't. It was pretty far from my sweet spot in terms of subject matter, but it was well done. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I I can totally get that. If you're if you're not about conspiracy theories, or not even entertaining the idea of conspiracy theory, um, then yeah, it it starts to get uh, it may great a little bit. But the the bit about money, you have to admit that's not a conspiracy theory. That's that's fact. What, uh, the gold standard? Yeah, yeah, Nixon did end the gold standard. And so what do we got? And what it is is basically um, a question. Well, yeah, the, the, the value of the paper money is based on what exactly? Trust. Yeah. Trust the American government. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so... Um, yeah, I, I, I do, I do appreciate the book and I am curious to read number two. So uh, this is number one. Yeah. This yes. is number one. So yeah, I think number two is available on the site. I think it might be free at twotonecomics.com. All right. I'm going to have to get that. Um, because yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't dig a lot of comics. Um, but this one was good. And I have to say recently we've been getting a lot of good ones. Um, and yeah, this is just another one for me anyway, because um, not only the the art and writing, but the subject matter as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm looking at number two on the website now. Yeah, it's uh, you can read the whole thing there on the site. Ah, uh, sweet. Hmm. Okay. So if you like free comics, go go to two tone comics dot com. No, 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 no. If you like good comics, read it for free. Hmm. Yeah, or free good comics. At twotonecomics.com. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, um, Mulele has a new Kickstarter, which will have started by the time you hear this. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm actually just, uh, just before launching, so I don't know what the progress is like at the moment. But, um, yeah, uh, this is for MindGator Part 2. Uh, MindGator Part 1, the Kickstarter came and went... Uh, last February to March, and so part two is now about to debut, and so I'm I'm ragged as a roach right now trying to get all the details together. But um, yeah, if it goes off without a hitch, which I'm sure it will, um, please check it out. And this will be running until when? Uh, well, um, it'll be running from the 23rd of. Uh, uh, what month is this? October? October. Thank you. Uh, 23rd of October to the 21st of November, I believe. Okay. 30 days. Okay. So it'll be a link at mulele.com? Uh, link at mulele.com. If you want to hit the landing page, mulele.com slash mindgator. Um, and uh, I guess 
uh, links everywhere uh, as soon as um, it goes live. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, and social media and all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Kickstarter. Also, com. There'll be a, a post about it uh, as, I, as I usually do. Yeah, okay. Great. Um, so if you'd like us to critique your work on this podcast, send a PDF or a link to mail at deconstructingcomics.com and we'll read at least 30 pages of it. So till next time, this is Tim. And Malele. Thanks for listening to Critiquing Comics. <laughs>